What's going on y'all? Real Films 1998 back here with another one. Today we're going to be talking about the sequel to a film that really surprised me a couple years back. Escape Rooms had been taking over in popularity before COVID hit. Sony had finally made a film with that same idea but the stakes were life and death. I enjoyed the first Escape Room a lot but the Tournament of Champions is much better in my opinion. Everything that worked in the first was dialed up to 11. There was more tension and more stakes. I wasn't even sure they'd be able to match the tension of the first film but I'm glad I was proven wrong. The story is not the strongest thing in the world, not by a long shot, but with the two main characters, Zoe and Ben, they're the only two people to ever get out together and they make for a great dynamic together. She saved him from the game in the first one. This film is a direct sequel, but I feel like there's a bit more to this storyline than there was in the first. We open up with Zoe in therapy because she couldn't handle losing the people in the previous set of challenges. The one thing that stands out more to her was Amanda's death. She was the person that we found out was a mother in the first film. Zoe's therapist pretty much doesn't believe her. She almost seemingly makes fun of her. She picks up a pen and a book and small things like that and tells her that they're clues. Her therapist asks what it would take for her to get on that plane that she's been wanting to get on. She responds with knowing that the people playing games with people's lives are stopped and won't do it again. But because the therapist doesn't truly believe her, she won't be able to help her. Zoe walks out and we see Ben waiting down the hall. This is the first time we see them together since the last film. They're now best friends and he says something along the lines of, I have this thing where I'm loyal to the people who saved my life. They're planning to go to New York City to find the building where they think the person is running this from. Zoe doesn't want to get on the plane, and the more time Ben took to think about it, the less he wants to do it too. They end up deciding to drive instead. On their way there, they have to stop at a hotel overnight. He has this nightmare that the room is collapsing on top of him right after Zoe left the room. It's almost like the challenge is all over again. He wakes up from the nightmare and gains his composure before they head out to the city. They arrive at the location that they saw had tons of people going in and out for a few days. They see what looks like, as they say, a junkie. He snags Zoe's necklace that she got from her mother. The two of them chase after him all the way onto a train cab and they're prepared to get off on the next stop. Unfortunately for them, the train was part of the escape room. Everybody in the cab has already played the game before. They gave this one guy a deep story about him feeling bad that he was always late to getting home. That day of all days was his anniversary too, unfortunately, and he ends up being the first one to die. Now they're in the loop of escape rooms that they have to get through. The next room is to figure out the right path to take with the tiles on the floor. The wrong move and lasers will pop out. Everybody gets through this room, but not everybody is conscious. Once Nathan wakes up again, they have to climb before the room collapses. They then get to a room with a beach. Like in the first one, this one has quicksand. Nate gets taken away by it. The rest of them find two different ways to get out of the room. One being a fridge, which they think is the main one, but Zoe thinks the window she pried open is the way to get out of the game completely, so she takes it with Rachel. Ben tries to make his way over to one of the exits, but he gets caught in the quicksand and he dies. There are only three people left at this point. Brianna is by herself, but Zoe and Rachel are on the run through the building. They finally climb out of a pothole, only to find out that they're now in the next room. This room rains acid. It's almost like this room was made for Rachel. Earlier in the film, she shared that she can't feel physical pain. Once they figure out what to do to get out of this room, Zoe is trapped in a car, and we follow her as she falls through the back seat. She lands in a bed with blocks that say Sonia on them. A while back, she thought that these rooms were almost telling a story. It turns out that was completely true. While the filmmakers are building the tension of this scene, out walks Amanda. Zoe's in complete disbelief. She saw her fall to her death in the the first film, or so she thought. It turns out that she landed on something like they would use to break falls behind the scenes of movies. She tells Zoe that if she didn't see it, it didn't happen. Amanda goes to explain that she was the creator of all these rooms that they've been escaping from this time. Zoe's in disbelief and just doesn't understand how she could work for them after everything. It turns out the name Sonia wasn't just for the story though, it was the name of Amanda's daughter. The people behind these want Zoe to design the next one. She's not having that at all. We then see Ben in a room next to them that's being filled with water. The glass is so thick that they can't even hit through it with a shovel. Zoe takes the gas in the room and makes the gas explode to save him again. The three of them work together to get out of the building. Ben and Zoe make it to the police station, and they see on the TV that everybody involved is getting arrested, but unfortunately the main guy that runs everything is yet to be found. The detective somehow found her necklace that the guy took in the beginning of the film. She asks if Ben wants to fly back, and they agree to finally get on the plane. On the plane, Zoe tells Ben that she thinks it was a little bit too easy. Zoe has to get up to go to the bathroom and then she thinks she sees her therapist, but the therapist doesn't seem to recognize her. Every single thing that that woman had on her, the therapist had told her it was a clue. As Zoe is starting to realize what's going on, they made an announcement saying that this is what it took for her to get on the plane, perfectly setting it up for a third film. I think the dynamic between characters is a little bit better in this than the first film, although it's still not ideal. The scripts definitely could have been better for both of these films. When watching these films, I wasn't questioning much of it though. 
It's only when you really stop to think about it too much afterwards. Some people make smart decisions and others make some really stupid decisions throughout. That helps it maintain its real world feeling though. Nobody's gonna have the same level of intelligence in situations like these. I'm gonna give this film a 7 out of 10. The script could have been a lot better but I think it's still a very enjoyable thrill ride that has some depth in certain areas. If you haven't seen the first one definitely check that one out before watching this. Escape Room Tournament of Champions. Have you seen it? What did you think? Did you enjoy this or the first one more? Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Once I get to 100 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a digital code for the Raimi Trilogy. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content and giveaways. Peace!